People love talking about cinema and people will come and they'll sit here for a couple of hours and you'll hear them all have conversations and they'll have conversations with the other groups and they'll all sort of have a common ground to discuss, which I think is what stories and ultimately movies are. For years, cinema has been an art form. It is an avenue for artists to express themselves to their audience. In the UK, though, this meaning transcends the standard definition of cinema. Film production in the UK has evolved to showcase the unique architecture of some of the country's most historic cities, including Bath. It's very much the history and the historic places. You know, the Royal Crescent and the Cirque and stuff is always used for, for, for various different things. Um, I know when they were doing Wonka, they filmed in the city centre and they did have some you know, shots that they obviously had to CGI out but it was very much the architecture and everything else because it's all the Victorian, all the older stuff. So I think that plays heavily into why they use Bath um, for what they use it for. Locals take pride in this architecture and eagerly eye these films as a way to prop up their economies. Making movies isn't cheap, and the crews that come in to work on these large productions supply just that little bit extra that helps these cities thrive. So when Monka was filming here, um, we would get, the crew would come in and they would Obviously, they're excited about comics and they buy. They, they want to buy stuff, but they'd come back the next day or, or the next time they're in, in in Bath, and the same with the extras. And we did have a couple of extras that we, I'm not saying they're friends, but we we see them because they they film with Wonka, but then they're filming somewhere else. So they, every time they come near Bath, they pop in. So it helps with the economy, helps us to to survive. Um, but it's great that they're here for that short period of time, but they do engage with the. The local businesses and everything else. So. Another small town that has benefited by this economic boom is coastal Lyme Regis. While Lyme Regis may not be everyone's first destination when they think of filming locations, companies have used this location quite effectively. I think with Lyme Regis, there are so many spots that are like tonic. So the pop, which has been shown in Blanca, Bridgeton of Tenet's Women, Ammonite, the new Mariana. Dinosaur Hunters, it was shown in The Boat That Rocked. It's a brilliant film. Um, and there's just so many bits of live that are very iconic. A lot of um, famous writers got a lot of their inspiration here. Jake Austen, Thomas Hardy, J.R. Tolkien. Um, and I think that's incredible that we've got so much history down here. And I think like you said that London you've got that that very fast paced lifestyle very smog <laughs> filled city and you come down here it's very clean it's very inspiring and I think that's that's why like we just is so good for it sort of building. And there's no doubt that using these unique charming locations has an effect on how films set in Britain are perceived by audiences across the globe. I think it's I think it's a, a mixture of a lot of things. I think it's that iconic location. If I think of any British film, there's a location for it. I really like um, British films that are the cliche British, sort of like Notting Hill, Love Actually, um, Harry Potter in a way, because there are places in Britain where it is that typical British yeah. Esco, yeah, uh, hot fuzz. cream teas, hot fuzz, hot fuzz. You brilliant want to film. Yeah, you want to get British people, watch yeah. hot fuzz. Alongside the distinctiveness of British films, it's this sense of community, this feeling of unity that keeps people watching and discussing movies and helps to grow interest in British film. I think um, passion usually feeds uh, uh, a business. Um, and that's usually felt by your audience um, in any rest of that, that distinguished um, nature. Like, people understand how much we love films because they see our film list. They can see how weird they are, how strange they are. And I feel like our busier nights are the stranger, sort of eclectic films. Um, and I think your audience speaks for itself and they'll come in again and again as long as you respect the material and uh, show them that you also care about it. Definitely. I think people, people's love for film brings them in. And then because they realise that we're also passionate about film, it also makes them stay and talk. And 
that's the best thing, it's the, that interaction. You'd expect to have a week's worth of posters, in fact, we've got a year's worth. And what we find is you get a lot of tourists walking past and they'll go, oh no, we missed um, Simon Peg week, or we missed um, Guillermo del Toro week. And it kind of is an advertisement for them what we did show, even if they're not able to see it or if they'll plan their trip for next year to come for that. It's kind of like a, a respect thing, like, oh, you know my favorite film, I'll come watch some of your weird films. Um, and people love talking about cinema. People will come to the bar and they'll sit here for a couple of hours and you'll hear them all have conversations and they'll have conversations with the other groups. And they'll all sort of have a common ground to discuss, which I think is what stories and ultimately movies are, is that common ground we can all kind of get past and get drunk with. <laughs>